on YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Turbo Tin. I know it's been quite some time since I've uh, released my last video, but life has been hectic and uh, a lot has been going on. But we now have enough time to make this one year review. Throughout this past year, since March 2023 to now March or April 2024, I have been enjoying my FL5 Type R immensely and I wanted to give you guys a review from an owner's perspective, uh, one who dailies it almost every day. I've put um, around 10,000 or so miles on this car now and I wanted to show you guys uh, the cost breakdown of owning the car, insurance costs, gas costs, uh, as well as my experience dailying the car how it drives on the road, how it drives on uh, at autocross, and just general everyday thing as you can expect from a hatch. And make sure you subscribe because I do have plans. Um, intake, intercooler, tune, I have the Hondata all ready. I just need the ECU unlocked. So. Make sure you subscribe for that content. And without further ado, let's get straight into the video. All right, guys, first things first, oil change. I know a lot of you um, probably changed your oil, your first oil about 5,000 or so miles, but I followed with Honda's recommended. There was nothing stated in the manual about how many miles the break-in oil was for. So I just went with the maintenance uh, plan, which is 9,430 miles. So yes, I did wait a lot. However, it is with the Honda maintenance plan and the dealer did recommend it. And since I'm following Honda's uh, recommendation, everything should be okay in terms of uh, warranty wise. So let's see, I did go to Honda of Chantilly, everything was covered. Um, all I had to pay was for the lift service from the dealer to my work, which was close by. And changed with OW20 synthetic. They also had a tire rotation and inspection and everything checked out okay. Now, to the more important point, I do have an oil catch can in here and I also have the Sprint filter. So we're going to check and see how much oil is in that catch can as well as how, how dirty the uh, Sprint filter is. So I'm sure you guys already know how to access your front hood. Pull it in there. And we lift. Let's see, where is it? Finally got it. It's been a long time, okay guys? So we'll go to the service bay. Here is the oil can. Let's see if I can get this out without any tools. Should be able to. There you go. Lefty Lucy. I do wish there was a lot, uh, a little bit more room in the back just so this process would be easier all right finally got it let's see the damages Whoa. there's uh not too much oil in here surprisingly and I don't see any flex or anything so we do a little pour it's not that significant of an amount so I don't know is it worth the investment I still think so um, I also think Maybe the uh, Honda techs at the dealer also changed this out. I'm not sure. Maybe they dumped this out and this is the oil from the oil change until now, which is about 600-ish miles. Um, 
I don't know. But if they didn't touch it and this was uh, from, what is it, 10,000 miles of a catch can, then I think this is pretty solid investment. All right, just hand tighten it in there. Next, we go to the uh, fuel filter or the air filter, which should only be a few clamps. All right. Uh, see some debris in there, some chunks, some insects, but otherwise relatively clean. Uh, I'm going to give this a little dust out just so it can uh, be cleaner and then I'll step it back in there. If you guys don't have one of these data vac dusters, I highly, highly recommend. It's uh, an electric duster used for cleaning your computer, electronics, whatever. But I think it's pretty good to clean out the air filter as well. It'll be a little bit loud, but we'll see. That is relatively clean enough for me, so I'm going to go ahead and stick that back into the car. Should be good to go. And that is it as far as maintenance goes. Um, on that catch can, I think this is the uh, main reason a lot of people do their own maintenance because you're not gonna know if the tech touched that uh, catch can or not. So I guess that will leave it up to interpretation or if other owners with the catch can can report back, then that would be great. I'm looking forward to that. But now let's go for a drive and I'll talk to you about the ownership experience. Here's a little cold start. can see I'm just a little past 10,000 miles on this car so we're gonna take a trip and I will talk about my owner experience all right let's start with the goods of this car if you can hear that that is the intake making that whoosh sound and the AWE Touring exhaust that I have on the car. This thing sounds good to me right now. Although I would like to hear a little bit more intake noises um, and that's when the new intake will be coming in. Will it be a PRL one? Will it be an inventory carbon fiber one? Stay tuned and find out. But um, this car is a riot to drive. Um, it takes corner really well. Uh, it is the fastest car I've ever owned. Uh, granted, you know, I'm 27, almost 28. So I, I haven't owned that many cars per se, but this is the fastest brand new car I've owned. Uh, and it is a lot of fun to drive. Now, are there goods in the technology department? Yes, yes, I think so. Um, I know a lot of people have had issues with their CarPlay unit or their infotainment unit um, CarPlay bugging out, having glitches and all that. Um, so far, I'm happy to report that I have had zero issues. Um, no glitches, no screen purpley, nothing lagging. I mean, everything 
comes out just fine decently fast for me um, I have no complaints about the infotainment unit um, all of the dials for HVAC physical big fan of that um, the hub or the uh, control for the vents also physical I love that as well now we're about to take a drive in uh, a decently fun road in my area um, lots of curves lots of turns and I love driving the car here um, you know a lot of people say hey the Civic should be all-wheel drive or it should be rear wheel drive to be fun uh, I will respectfully disagree I think um, even though this is front-wheel drive it is super fun it is good the way it is um, are there improvements to be had yeah I mean I'm not uh, savvy enough to know and I will admit that <laughs> um, what what could be improved on this car I mean more power sure you know, we can always tune that but traction will be limited and you know you run into all kinds of issues when you, you put more power into the car and another thing that I changed out on the car as opposed to stock are the wheels and tires I did go down a size I went on a uh, 18 by nine and a half with 38 offset and I'm running the Kumo V730 tires in 265-35-18s and the thicker sidewall has helped a lot with the uh, potholes and um, small dinks here and there in Northern Virginia roads um, it's doing decently well absorbs all those potholes fairly decently uh, when compared to the uh, stock 30 sidewall tires now to be expected this car does have a lot of road noise and there's not a lot of insulation I mean it is a race car um, or a track purpose car um, so I, I it's not it's not a complaint per se but it's just something to take in mind or to keep in mind if you're uh, still on the fence about buying this car as a daily if you're uh, noise sensitive then I, I would not recommend this car I'd recommend something a little more uh, luxury hear that as well but that was the uh, infotainment unit having rattles um, that's another uh, downside to this car the fit and finish is eh, okay at best it's not like you know the best uh, fitted car in there in the world it's not like a Lexus or anything and it's not it's not expected to uh, to fit like a Lexus so another thing to keep in mind when you're uh, if you're on the lookout for this car Another thing that I don't like, and uh, I think you can see it, is the wireless charger. I mean, all of my phones have been wireless charging ready, and if I put it on there, sometimes it charges, sometimes it doesn't, and it has to be placed a very uh, particular way. And then when I take a corner and the phone slips, then it stops charging, so I just turn it off. And uh, you can turn it off by just holding the power button on the pad itself. Uh, for like two or three seconds and it'll turn off uh, you'll know it's turned off because there's no lights on it and as you can see I have a USB-C cable here ready to uh, physically plug that into my phone a complaint I had about the car uh, in the last video when I first picked it up my initial impressions was the uh, no sunglasses holder and a lot of you guys were like oh my god like you're you're driving a race car you don't need a sunglasses holder yeah okay but you know it'll be a nice to have however since the uh, wireless phone charger doesn't work that's where I usually put my glasses or sunglasses I put them there now I mean they it holds it decently well I don't 
don't have any uh, complaints. That was some rough road there. Um, yeah, so I, I just put my glasses in there. Not a problem. I mean, I have my home garage stuck on the uh, visor, sun visor. So, so far, you know, living every day in this car is pretty good. Uh, besides from the small inconveniences like uh, no heated seats or sla uh, manual manual seats and manual mirrors. Uh, I've seen the European has the power folding mirrors. I'm thinking about switching those, but we'll see. Depends on how much wiring is needed. Um, might, might not be a job for me because uh, I'm kind of lazy. Um, another thing to keep in mind, mine, uh, my VIN ends with 651. Um, when I first checked uh, the Honda website for the driver's seat recall, there was nothing about it. However, I did receive a letter in the mail saying that I do need to get my seat replaced uh, due to squeaky, uh, you know, welds way back last year. However, um, I still have not experienced any of those problems. I mean, I'm sitting in my driver's seat right now. I'm wiggling. There's, there's, there's no problems at all. Um, I did go to the dealer and they did ask if I wanted to get that replaced. I said no. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, I've also seen horror stories of people taking their cars to the dealer and getting it all scratched up. And the dealer was like, well, tough luck, you know, we're not replacing that. So I'm not risking that whatsoever. Another negative um, is the dash, the cluster. Uh, the screen on that is extremely scratch uh, sensitive. So as you can see here, I, I wiped it with a fiber towel or microfiber towel and it's still scratched. Um, and that was a brand new towel no you know never been used before i know it doesn't have any dust or dirt on it and it still scratched my uh my dash cluster so i would highly recommend if you're a new owner i would uh put a screen protector on that asap for me this is a uh i will drive it forever type of car i'm not selling this thing so i don't really care too much about resale value so I'm okay with the scratches. Um, however, the infotainment screen, no scratch at all. So we're good to go on that regards. One thing I do hope Honda puts in their uh, updated or refreshed models for the Type R is a, a dedicated button for turning on and off uh, auto rev matching. The auto, the auto rev match in this car is super good. Like it, it ships way better than me, obviously. You know, I can't beat a computer, but uh, some days, you know, I do wanna take it out for a spirited drive and I have to turn, put the car in park, um, go into the settings, fiddle around with it until I find the uh, uh, auto rev matching button to turn it off. Uh, at this point, I can do that in about three seconds. It's not hard. I remember where it is. But I do want, and it's, it'll be nice to have, you know, a dedicated button down there, just like in the GR Corolla. I think Toyota did that right with the IMT button. And I, I wish Honda would do the same. Uh, makes it way more in, uh, convenient for drivers to switch between uh, manual rev matching and auto rev matching. Now from a daily driver perspective, um, this car is amazing. Uh, the hatch holds so much space. It, it, there's so much volume in the, in the, in the rear that I've carried um, a five feet desk in the box just with the back, uh, just with the back seats uh, folded down. And it, yeah, I had to scoot up my front seats as well, but 
it, it, it's enough space to haul, haul that. And uh, I'll put a picture up here. And I've also had a um, 75 inch TV fit with no problems. It, it just goes in the hatch flat down, you know, no issues at all. So if you're looking for a spacious uh, cargo space, this, this car is it. I mean, I've had uh, picnics picnics in the uh, in the back of this car with the seats folded down you know stargazing and it, it, it's an amazing car um, in that regard so if you're looking for something fun and practical this is it I'm pretty sure this car is bigger than the GR Corolla um, so take take that with a grain of salt but all of that hauling cargo space I am in love I, I can carry so many things in this car and it, it's a big plus for me One of my biggest gripes about this car is the small fuel tank. Um, as I daily this from to and from work, uh, this car needs to be filled up once a week. Uh, if I work five days a week, and I do uh, work five days a week in the office, my commute's about 20 miles each way, and this tank is pretty small. Uh, I get to about 200 or 210. Uh, miles and I will have to fill up and that's yeah, it's about five days a week um, So we'll, we'll go over the uh, Fuel cost in a bit, but I do Dislike that I have to fill up so often um, in the car Due to the small tank uh, again. I get that it's a race car, you know weight reductions and all that, but um, It's it's, it's a small inconvenient for me as a daily driver. Uh, as many owners have noted, the dampening system in this car is over-tuned. Uh, I do agree. I mean, this is a perfectly, or not perfectly, but a decently smooth enough road. But I'm still feeling all the uh, all the bumps and it's, uh, it's a pretty stiff car. So... Do I plan on installing the Acura ADS uh, module? Yes, yes I am. I will be putting out a video on that. When the system arrives, uh, it's been on back order for a few months now and I still haven't gotten my hands on it yet. So we will see um, how much of an improvement that will be to the car. I mean, right now I'm in comfort suspension if I put it in plus R mode. Pretty sure my butt will regret this after the trip, and uh, I'm I'm already regretting it now. I don't know if you can see from the uh, GoPro footage that I'm recording with right now, but it is extremely bumpy. Um, very very bumpy, as opposed to comfort mode. Speaking of comfort mode, this is my individual settings. Uh, I have the engine in plus R, steering in sport. Plus R steering is too stiff for me in uh, in a daily driver perspective. Suspension on comfort, engine sound in plus R. Rev match on comfort, because uh, I don't have it on. And gauge is in plus R mode, because I love this gauge. I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to drive this, you know, I'm, I bought a Type R. I want to be different than a regular Civic, so there you go, plus R gauges at all times. That's that's the uh, other thing I like about this car, the plus R gauge, super nice. And you know, when I get up there in the rev range, uh, the ship lights will turn on and that's, that's pretty cool, you know, because race car. All right, ladies and gents, so we are back in the garage now and I will be talking about the total cost of ownership for the past year that I've owned this car. I'll also uh, list out the gas costs, the insurance costs, my payments on the car, and as well, um, any miscellaneous expenses like the filter or the uh, catch can. And I will list all of those on screen. Um, before we go into that, the cost I've, also, I've put 
out one video totaling the cost of ownership so far in the month for the car uh, a few months ago and so I'll put the total of that on screen and then let's see as far as the insurance cost goes I'm 27 I own a few cars I have the house so taking all of that into account I'm paying $1,235 every six months for the car so make it easy you know the whole year it comes out to be $2,470 um, for insurance owning the car that is two ways with uh, deductibles and all that jazz um, I'm with State Farm uh, I've seen that people get lower rates with Geico um, I will see if I can get a lower rate but you know I'm not hoping for anything extreme uh, it's it's a type R after all I know some insurance company just claim it as a regular Civic so we will see now with that in mind let me pull up the gas costs Ch -ch -ch -ch. gas mm -mm -mm. so during my ownership of this Type R, I've tracked uh, 9,746 miles in total. My best MPG was 29.0. I got that back in May of 2023. Uh, my worst MPG would be around 20.6 pretty sure that was when I got the exhaust installed so I uh, floored it a lot um, overall within the whole year my average price per gallon was 385 and that's for 93 premium uh, I only gas fill up at Costco my average MPG for the whole year was 23.8 I spent roughly 75% of my driving on the highway because you know again this is a daily and I do drive it to work a lot um, I also go on trips here and there just for fun and so the average price per fuel up is $31.67 um, and the total amount of money spent on gas alone on this car is $1,615.08 so Overall, not too bad. I mean, it, it is still technically an economy car. Um, so that amount of money is in line with what I expected. Um, maintenance wise, since I did maintenance through Honda and it's still within their two year maintenance window, everything is free. Oil change was, oil change was free. Tire rotation was free. Um, besides the cost of mounting and mounting and balancing new tires um, everything of regular maintenance on the car has been covered by Honda um, haven't had any issues as far as reliability goes everything works just fine um, no squeak on the driver's seat again no issues uh, oil catch can I will put the cost of that on screen uh, sprint filter I will also put that on screen um, besides that, haven't really experienced much issues with the car. Um, one thing I will definitely do is install the Acura Type S, uh, Integra Type S dampening module when it comes. And I will put a video on that for sure. Um, because currently the car is really, really stiff and I would like to be less stiff um, and that is all for my video today I hope that helps you guys if you're current owners or if you're future owners looking to have a type R um, I hope that this video helps you out um, everybody's living expenses is different I would highly suggest that if it if you can afford it comfortably that this is your you know one and only vehicle or you have extra money for a fun vehicle I would definitely buy this again however 
Um, a lot of forum reports and Discord reports have been showing that people have been getting this car at MSRP uh, fairly easily now. All you have to do is look out of state, get it shipped back, It'll probably cost you around two to three thousand um, dollars. So either you can find one locally for roughly two to three thousand dollars over, or you find out of state for MSRP and ship that back home or fly out and drive it back home. That's up to you, but with the uh, increased um, interest, ratio, uh, interest rates on auto loans, uh, I will do all your numbers prior to getting a car. I know some people buy cars based on feelings and excitement and all that, but even though I was excited for this car, even though I did pay over MSRP for this car, I'm in a comfortable enough spot to comfortably afford that and I can still keep my lifestyle at a healthy um, income ratio and I'm not going into massive debts just so I can have this car, just so I can run a YouTube channel. So taking all that into account, would I recommend getting this car over MSRP? Um, hard to say. Again, depends on your income level, depends on what else you spend on in your life and how much you want to spend on a car. Uh, I would say if you can get MSRP, which is fairly easier now than a year ago, I would totally go for that. If you can wait it out, if you're buying all cash, I would wait it out, buy your car for MSRP. If you're financing your car, make sure you find the best rates. Do all your rates calculation. Is it worth it to get MSRP or find it out of state, get it shipped back, all that jazz. Make sure you do your uh, due diligence and I wish you guys the best. Stay subscribed, hit that like uh, button if this video helped you out and I will see you in the next one. Peace.